bulletin this morning. I hope we have many like it in prime time. Uh, I appreciate the School of Journalism hosting us. My wife here is a proud graduate of the School of Journalism, this one. Uh, our daughters, Casey and Hannah, uh, probably being picked up from school right now and maybe listening to us live. And again, I appreciate very much this opportunity. You know, if this were a, if this were a criminal trial, this would be the opening statement and would be my opportunity to try to explain to you or predict for you what the next 75 minutes would be like. Now, what's interesting is on this day, September the 11th, seven years ago, I was at a similar forum in our nation's capital, an early breakfast debate with a Democratic senator from North Dakota. And we were debating the federal budget, and I was enthusiastically pointing out we were about to roll into our fourth year of a consecutive balanced budget. We had begun to pay down the national debt, and yet we hit an economic downturn, and I was enthusiastically talking about my vision to get our national economy moving. Uh, the Democratic senator uh, began to talk about uh, how the government wasn't doing enough, and how that uh, you know times were bad, and criticizing the chief executive, even though he'd only been in office for uh, a few uh, a few months. And uh, of course, then that first plane that slammed into the World Trade Center brought that debate to a close. Here we are today, uh, seven years later, on this day of remembrance, and I find myself again at a forum discussing the future of our great state acknowledging the challenges that are before us, but enthusiastically offering bold proposals to solve those challenges. But with respect, I sus suspect, uh, as Yogi Berra would say, uh, we're likely to see deja vu all over again, and you're probably going to hear some pessimism and some doom and gloom and criticism, and probably not very many solutions from others that are standing here. Uh, I want to just put out on the table, I have high regard for the Attorney General, uh, he kept me in his employ as special prosecutor when he was elected 16 years ago. Uh, but isn't the greatness of our country the ability to have someone, hold someone in regard, and yet be able to aggressively disagree with them? And distance yourselves or define yourselves and your positions. You know, we, we've heard a lot about change in this election. To me, real change means having the political courage to stand there on your principles and have a vision and head toward that vision. And for those of you who have allowed me to serve you in the 9th Congressional District, you know I've, I've stood with the President when I felt he was right. I voted to override his veto when I thought he was wrong. I've taken on my own party leaders. I've censured the Majority Leader of Congress in my party and suffered the repercussions for it. But I did it because that's why you sent me to serve you in the halls of government. I think as candidates for the highest office in our state, we owe it to you to put forth significant proposals. Now, I've put some bold initiatives out there, and I've invited your critique. Solutions that I think would move us in a new direction for our state, and throw rocks at it, embrace it, but let's discuss it. For instance, I'm pushing reforms on crime and public safety, uh, focused on senior citizens dealing with uh, property taxes, and veterans. I proposed an energy plan for our state. I put forth measures encouraging the, the uh, ethical, non-controversial research for life-saving cures, a substantive job creation, higher education funding formulas, workforce development. I'm the only one up here who, who's expressed a commitment to dealing with our failing schools in downtown Kansas City and St. Louis. I put forward a comprehensive marketplace-based health care plan. And yet, I don't suspect you're going to hear from any others here ideas other than let's turn the clock back and hit the reset button. Politics as usual, unfortunately. You know, nine days ago at a University of Missouri research farm, the Attorney General expressed some support for farmers and finding markets for our products, and yet has, I've been criticized by doing just that with reciprocal trade agreements that tear down barriers for our ag products and manufactured goods. Last Tuesday, the Attorney General told university officials how he supported their mission and wanted to work to enhance opportunities for research, and yet two years ago today, the Attorney General called a press conference, maybe some of you were there, and he announced his intent to single-handedly bring down the Lewis and Clark Initiative by suing Mohila. Our state is at a crossroads. I'm offering a new way, a new direction. <coughs> Unfortunately, there are those who are offering old, tired politics. That's not the change we need. I'm Kenny Holtzoff. I'd be honored to have your support. Thank you, Kenny.